Site-directed mutagenesis involves making localized edits to a pre-existing DNA sequence. Typically, it is used to introduce point mutations into a sequence, such as to mutate a protein's active site or alter the strength of a ribosome binding site. In a previous lecture, we discussed an old-school method, Kunkel mutagenesis. That was the original technique, however much simpler protocols exist today. EIPCR stands for Enzymatic Inverse PCR. The term inverse PCR refers to the fact that you're going to PCR around the backbone of the template DNA. You design two oligos that both anneal near the site of mutation, but are oriented such that the polymerization occurs from one another around the circle. This results in a linear double-stranded PCR product like any other PCR. If a restriction site is included in the 5' ends of the oligos, then the PCR product will contain this site on its ends. Cleavage with the restriction enzyme generates sticky ends, which can be joined by T4 ligase to reclose the circle. That material is then transformed. EIPCR can be done with conventional type 2 enzymes like ECHOR1, and the resulting product will contain the restriction site. Alternatively, it can be done with a type 2S enzyme like BSA1. Because BSA1 will cut itself off the ends of the PCR product, it will be absent in the final product. Thus, scarless mutagenesis can be performed. EIPCR turns out to be an exceptional method of saturation mutagenesis for construction of libraries, which we'll revisit in a later lecture on combinatorial libraries. Quick change mutagenesis is the easiest to implement site-directed mutagenesis technique. Here you design two complementary oligos with 20 base pairs homology to the template plasmid, the mutation, and then another 20 base pairs of homology. Thus, these are typically 45 base pairs or so in length. These two oligos are used in a PCR containing this template. Though the conditions are identical to PCR, the complementary nature of the oligos leads to it being an inefficient PCR since the oligos can anneal to one another rather than to the plasmid. This can be improved by doing a two-step procedure where first two parallel reactions are performed with just one of the two oligos in each reaction, and then the two reactions are combined for future rounds. After the PCR, the template DNA is degraded with DPN1 due to the presence of dam methylation such that all that remains in the mixture is the synthetic product. This is then introduced into E. coli by transformation.